Welcome to Rudder High School for some UIL playoff basketball on Vibe Live, everybody. Good evening. My name is Jack Farrell, and we have made the trip. We are out here in Bryan, Texas. We've got the area round ahead tonight with a matchup between your Anderson Trojans and the Lake Creek Lions. Both of these teams entering tonight after making it out of their by district round. The Lions out of Montgomery, Texas, are the runner-up in District 20, and they come in with a record of 17 and 8 on the season. Trojans, the winners of D18, are at 19 and 5. We've got a quick turnaround from the first round here tonight after having to make up for lost time with the Winter Storms last week. Both of these squads played their by district game on Monday and the Lions were able to survive a very close contest with A&M Consolidated. The score there was 49-47. to 47. Now, Trojans, on the other hand, played a pretty first quarter and a half or so before they, before they were able to pull away a bit in the, in the end of the first half, and then in the second half, they just ran all the way away with it. Starters in that game, Jack Francis and Nick Harris, the stars that night, both posted 20-point efforts in their win over the Pflugerville Panthers. Some big highlights posted in that game by the Anderson Trojans, including a few gnarly and one buckets for Nick Harris, four-point play from Jack Francis, and Jaden Austin with an unbelievable chase down block early in the first quarter. Anderson won that game 68-49. to Once again, a very good defensive effort from Anderson, and we know how they like to play. We've seen it all season. They like to force their opponents into taking some tough, bad shots. They're very good as a trapping team on defense. They're very efficient with that. They're good at jumping into passing lanes, getting deflections, getting steals. And then they force turnovers, and then you get out and run. And that's where this Anderson team is so dangerous. They are excellent in the fast break, and they have a ton of guys who finish very, very well around the basket. Tonight, Anderson looks to secure a berth in the quarterfinal round with a victory. As we mentioned, we took the, uh, the drive out here to Bryan for another neutral site game. Anderson on the season had actually 3-0 at neutral site locations, including uh, two games at the Burger Center up in Austin and the victory at Weiss on Tuesday. This is Anderson's second straight year making it to the area round. Last year in this round, they took out the Brennan Bears last year, and that was a thrilling victory for Anderson. And for Lake Creek, they are pretty much a brand new school. They opened up in 2018 and have made the playoffs in all three seasons of their team's existence. In fact, last year they were able to take their run all the way to the regional semifinal round before being eliminated. But for now, they'll have to face a very tough Anderson team out of Austin who has won their last 15 games. We're pretty close here to the opening tip-off. We're just about four and a half minutes away. Tip will be at 7 o'clock. We're getting underway here very soon. And looking around the rest of the bracket of the uh, of 5A regions 3 and 4 for Anderson, if you look at it, of the four District 17 teams that qualified for the playoffs, that's Anderson's district, of course, the uh, two remain. Yeah, excuse me, just two of those districts, or of those teams from that district remain. Lockhart and Crockett were the two teams that have uh, had their seasons come to a close in the by district round. And if you remember uh, back on Monday, the Hendrickson and Crockett game they played together was uh, played immediately following Anderson's game at Weiss. So Hendrickson got the dub in that one and pretty handily too. It was 89 to 65. Weiss was actually the team that, look, uh, that took out Lockhart. And it looks like that one was on Saturday. The score there was 62 to 44. Now, as we mentioned just a minute ago, Hendrickson, um, they are playing tonight, actually right now, against Magnolia. That game tipped off at 6.30, so they're probably working their way towards towards halftime right about now. So by the end of this one, we might be able to see if the UIL has the uh, site updated to see who got the victory there. That game is significant because the winner here will play the winner there. So if both of the high seeds, that being Andrickson and uh, Hendrickson, get the victory tonight, they will play again in the next quarterfinal round. And if uh, both of those teams do play, it will be a rematch of a game that happened earlier this season. Hendrickson, the home team in it, and they got the victory over Anderson, but that was way back in December, in early December, I believe on the 4th. McCallum, the other team from uh, the District 17 that is in here right now, they were able to take down Maynard 56-39, to and they play tonight at 7, just like we do. They're playing Kingwood. So that'll be a good matchup there. We'll let you know if we can get word on that one as well. But for now, we'll have to wait on some of those future games because Anderson still has a very good opponent ahead of them in Lake Creek. 
We will have that coming up for you in just a couple of minutes. You are listening to Anderson Trojan Playoff Basketball on Vibe Live. Be right back. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at Vibe, Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close at the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming back here out of the pregame. Got cheerleaders here for Lake Creek. Make sure they move across and not uh, so they're not blocking us in, in front of our camera. And we know I will. Uh, I will give y'all just the heads up. Already, I'm, uh, I'm I'm aware you're you're looking at it and you're you feel disgusted. I don't love the camera angle either. I feel uh, it's all right. It's uh, the only position that they would we could get in the gym tonight. It's not a very big gym, and uh, we got some fans in the stands, so it's. Uh, Got to give them some ground, too. But for now, we got the, uh, I believe we're going to have the national anthem and the announcements of our starting lineup. So we will get those going. And uh, we're going to send it to the PA right now. Number 
Well, unfortunately, we're going to have about a thousand cheerleaders parked right in front of the camera for this broadcast. But Anderson's got their starters out on the court, looking to make it all the way to the quarterfinal round, second time that they would do that in the last two seasons. Tonight, they have to take down Lake Creek. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make some noise. Starters for tonight taking the court. On the opening tip, it looks like it will be Charlie Johnson and Nick Harris. So here we go, getting underway here. Opening tip one, batted back. It's batted into the backcourt and eventually taken away by Lake Creek. So they will have their first possession of the game. Anderson will get a look at it right after this. Taking it at the top of the key is Fitch. He works it over to number 42, Hudson Boyd. He's out on the wing, defended by Nick Harris. Now working the ball back around outside. Fitch drives to his right. He kicks to the corner. That's almost taken away, but Fitch is able to regain it up top. Good defense by Anderson to cut off the penetration. Here's Fitch. He kicks it inside. It's Johnson. Johnson working his way in. He goes over Francis. It's no good. Rebound taken away by Wagner. And here come the Anderson Trojans. Wagner skips it ahead to the corner. Jack Francis had a transition opportunity. Kicks it back to Mike. Said, here's Nick Harris open in the corner for downtown. It's no good. He comes off a 20-point outing in the last game. But the rebound is taken by Benito Black. So Anderson will have another opportunity to look at it here. Harris up top. Now over to Francis. Francis working his way around the perimeter. They kick it up top. Here's Wagner. Now seven minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Just a minute gone. Now Mike's going to take it into the paint. Here's Jaden up top with it. Now back to a reset. Anderson not able to get any penetration here so far. They kick to the corner, and that's going to be an offensive foul going against Nick Harris. We're sorry, folks. The taking a minute to get retooled here. I'm having to reset my angles a little bit now that we have cheerleaders down in front. So I guess I'm going to be standing up for this broadcast. Over with it on the right side. That's Ty George. They get it back up top. Boyd works it up top. Now on the perimeter is Mason Moore. He works it into the right side. That is Charlie Johnson. Both teams just trying to get a feel for each other right now, working the ball around the perimeter a little bit. Fitch is the one with it, running the point, and they swing it over to Boyd on the wing. Now back up top, they left more open. He'll have an open look at the three. It's no good. Long rebound goes to Jack Francis. Francis pushing up, dribbles to his right. Kick it across. This is Wagner. Wagner up to Harris. Harris shot fake, drives in, kicks to the corner. It's Benito Black. He's going to take it baseline. That's cut off. Now back inside to Wagner. Wagner. He'll get the first layup of the game for the Anderson Trojans. So a good, easy look at the basket there. Here's Lake Creek. Harris in defense. Fitch on the drive. His floater's no good. But the rebound goes right back to him on the baseline. 
have to work their way around back up top. Now driving in, taking the short running jumper is no good, but that'll go out of bounds off of Anderson. It looked like it was off of Lake Creek, off of the Hudson Boyd miss, but it'll stay down here. Back outside. We're able to get it in. Fitch is with it, defending Francis. Fitch, attacks baseline, kicks to the corner, passes Aaron. It's going to go out of bounds. That's a turnover for Lake Creek into the hands of Anderson. So Harris is going to be in on the inbound for Anderson now. Wagner. Here's Harris. Get it into Francis, a risky pass, but they find Wagner wide open in the corner, and that's good. Mike Wagner, two for two to start the game, and he's got all five Anderson points. As I've said all season with this Anderson team, you never know who it's going to be on any given night. I'm giving you all those points. Last game, Nick Harris dropped 20. So far, Mike Wagner has five points in the first quarter. They get it inside to the high post. Charlie Johnson. They get Fitch on the handoff. Now Fitch working around the perimeter, and that's going to be knocked away inside by Wagner. Mike Wagner making his mark on the er area around early here. Now Jaden Austin's with it on the wing. He looked at a three, but he's going to find Wagner back outside. Wagner, nice little entry pass to Benito Black, and he gets it to go. 7 nothing lead for the Anderson Trojans. And you know what? It's not the usual suspects making the damage. Wagner and Benito Black scoring the first three baskets of the game for Anderson. Now here's Moore with it on the outside. They kick to an open three for Boyd, and he knocks it down. Finally, the first basket comes for the Lake Creek Lions. Wagner now dealing with a little bit of pressure. He passes ahead. This is dangerous. Anderson, Francis going to step into a triple. It's no good short. And here comes Boyd, hit the three last time down. Now Fitch. Swing it onto the right or the left side, excuse me. They get it into the post. Now they're going to have to force it back outside. Crosses over behind the back. Fitch attacking the basket. He falls down. That's going to be another turnover. Anderson getting out and running. Here's Nick Harris. Fakes the pass, goes all the way in, and that's going to be an offensive foul. And that's a rowdy student section for Lake Creek, not a mask in sight. Now ball inbound, here's Hudson Boyd. He gets it into Fitch, now working the ball up for the Lions. Dribbles to the top of the key, Black in defense. They're trying to force it into the post. They are able to. Austin is there to steal it. Anderson just stealing the ball on every possession so far early. Mike Wagner pushing the pace. They won't D him up full court. They kick it to Austin. It's knocked away, saved right into the hands of Jack Francis. Now Jack's going to kick it to the corner, open three for Harris. That one's good. So an unfortunate loose ball for the Lions leads to an open triple for Anderson, and they have connected once again from downtown. It's their second of the game. Anderson leads it 10-3 in the early going. Now Boyd outside. They kick it back up top to Fitch. And with the tough angle, we're going to have to give you more of a, uh, a radio look tonight. And here's Boyd with it, working his way. He pulls up from the mid-range. It's no good. Good box out. Austin almost lost it. Benito is there to clear it away. Now he's going to push the pace. Back outside to Wagner. 2.20 remaining here in the first. It's been quick so far. Anderson leads 10-3 without many stoppages. Francis, left side, looked at the three. He's not going to take it. Now he dribbles back outside. Screen comes from Black. Now back up top, Wagner. They'll reset over to Austin. Austin now going to try from downtown. That's no good. Too strong. Rebound goes inside to Francis. Jack's going to pull it right back out. Two minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Back to Wagner. Wagner crosses over into the middle. He passes into Harris. Pass is too strong. Nick couldn't catch it. It'll go out of bounds. That's an Anderson turnover. We got our first subs of the game. It's going to be Marlowe and Keel coming in. And who's checking out? It's going to be Austin and Harris. So it's Black, Marlowe, Wagner, Keel, and Francis. One forty-eight left. Anderson leads 10-3. It's a football score early. Here's Jordan Fitch. He's had the ball pretty much the whole game for the Lions so far. 
Now he's working his way to the center of the court. Gross Keel, great on-ball defender in front of him. Now here's Boyd, hit a three. Now here's Moore, looked at the three-pointer, won't take it. Now back outside. Screen comes from George. Fitch uses it to get around the middle. He's going to attack the paint, kick it to the corner. Moore's going to have another look at it. This one he knocks down. Anderson still with the lead. They've cut it to four. So far, only two field goals, both threes for the Lions as they pass ahead to Benito Black. They find a cutting Marlowe who turns around, spins to Francis. Francis all day to take it, and he's got it. Jack Francis matches it on the other end. Three-point bucket is good for the Anderson Trojans. Everyone filling it up early in the first quarter for Anderson. They lead 13 to six. Fitch, he passes off. That shot's no good, but the rebound is good inside to Johnson. Johnson goes up with it, and he gets it to go. Finally here, Lake Creek starting to string together some offensive possessions. And they're coming in on the other end with the press. Anderson still with a five-point lead, 30 seconds left. They'll maybe hold for the final shot here. As this is a skip across to Jack Francis. Back to Wagner. Now we're down to 10 seconds left on the clock. They gotta make something happen here. Five-point lead for Anderson over to Jack. Screen comes from Marlowe. Jack dribbles around it, kicks to Marlowe, fading to the corner. Four downtown, no good. Rebound goes up to nobody, but it'll go out of bounds. .1 seconds left. It's Lake Creek ball, but they won't be able to get a shot off here. So after the first quarter, they turn it over. Lake Creek turns it over. That's a steal from Keel, so that'll be counted in the scorebooks at least. So that'll do it for the first quarter. Anderson leads it 13-8. to like to give a quick shout out to my QA, Mr. Josh Cargill, as well as our logo sponsors for tonight's game, Harry Breen and Herman, as well as Encotech. But at the end of the first quarter, we're going to go ahead and take our first break of the broadcast. You're listening to Trojan Basketball on Vibe Live. We'll be right back. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipe.com. Back out of the timeout. Anderson leads it early into the start of the second quarter. Interesting first quarter. Lake Creek struggled on the offensive end, but they started to hit some three-pointers down the line. They were only able to hit three field goals in that opening quarter. Nick Harris, Jack Francis, and Mike Wagner, all for Anderson, were able to hit triples. Mike with another basket in there, along with Benito Black, to make it 13. Mike leads the way with five. And here we go for the second. Langley's in the game now. Wagner's going to get a look at the basket. His shot's no good. Langley can't get it. That's out of bounds. It should be Anderson Ball here. So, 7.48 left here in the half. Right out of the start of the second quarter. They kick it to the corner. That's going to be deflected out of bounds. They were looking for Austin to take that three in the corner. The shot, or the pass, excuse me, was deflected. Wagner, they find Francis right at the basket. Easy deuce, Jack, five points. 15 to eight. Jordan Fitch bringing it around for the Lions. Keel cuts that off. Gross Keel, one of the best on-ball defenders on this team as Austin gets in there and forces it away. Another great on-ball defender as there's Jaden leaking out for it. He gets the layup to go. Jaden Austin forces the turnover, gets the deuce on the other end. He is into the scoring column and Anderson leads by nine. Here's Boyd working his way into the middle, kicks to the right side. Francis chasing him off the three-point line. They pass it inside. That's going to be an offensive foul going against Lake Creek. Anderson putting the clamps on, only allowed eight points through the first nine minutes. So here's Jack on the inbound. Looking for Wagner. Gets it over the cheerleaders. 
Now Wagner over to Keel on the right side. Gross Keel gets it off. Jack Francis, he has it in the corner. Now back up top, Wagner. Wagner calls out the play. They get it set. Francis comes on the screen. They kick it over to Keel. Now Keel with it. He's working his way around the perimeter. He's going to attack the basket, lay it up. That's blocked. So now Keel getting back on the other end. It was four on five for a moment. Lake Creek unable to take advantage. Now Langley's isolated out on Fitch. Screen comes from Boyd. Now they get it over. Here's Moore. Moore kills his dribble up top, and Jaden Austin pops into the passing lane to rip that one away. Anderson, once again with the steal. As we mentioned pregame, they love to get in there, force deflections, get those steals, pass into the corner. Here's Gross Keel from downtown. He'll try his lot. That's no good. Rebound inside is taken away by Moore. That's a good rebound from him going up and get it. He's got three points. Fitch goes in, attacks the basket. He's going to pull up, pass to the corner. Now driving inside. They pass it in. Wagner got a hand on it. Austin is there to take it away. Man, Wagner and Austin have just been all over the place in this game, man. Just getting stop after stop. The Anderson lead has rested at nine here for a little bit. It's 17 to eight. Jack Francis with it up top. He swings it over to Wagner. He's going to attack the baseline. That's got to be a kick ball. But I, that, no, he stepped out of bounds and uh, might, maybe a correction. Uh, now that I see that, kickball might not be a rule in high school. That might just be, a, that just might be at the upper levels. But either way, he put his heel on the baseline. That's Anderson Ball. Wagner's getting his first break of the night. So for Anderson, it's Austin, Keel, Harris, Langley, and Francis. Jack's on the inbound here. They get it up top. Here's Keel. They kick to Francis in the corner. He looked at the three, decides not to take it. Keel has it. He's going to hand it off to Jack. 5.35 remaining here in the second. Francis calling for a screen. Keel's going to come up. Instead, he'll just take the pass. Now here's Harris moving through. Keel attacks the basket. He floats it up, and that's good. Gross Keel pushes the Anderson lead two double figures. It's 19-8. to eight. First basket of the game for Gross Keel. Six Anderson players now have scored. As Fitch crosses over, gets to the basket, kicks it outside to Boyd. He's going to take the one dribble, step into it. That's no good. Gross Keel with the rebound. Anderson flying all over the place on defense right now. It's a pleasure to watch. Five minutes left. Keel with it on the outside. He works it up top to Francis. Jack's going to take a deep three. It's no good. Long rebound bounces out to, well, Nick Harris ends up with it. Nick's going to take a dribble inside, pull up. That's no good. Rebound falls out to Mason Moore. Now here's Fitch pushing the pace. He's going to take it all the way in. He'll get his first basket of the game. Finally, that stops the drought. That's their first basket of this second quarter. So here's Keel. Taking their time getting across. They need to hurry. And eventually they get it to Austin. Tried to get it to Harris. The ball's back outside to Fitch. Now Fitch pushing. He's got a two-on-one. Tacks the basket. Lays it up. Short-armed it. No good. Jack is there on the rebound. Fitch wanted a foul, but that was a clean play by Francis. Now Jack crosses over, gets to his right, floater is no good, too strong. Rebound falls inside. Hey, Creek's got it. It's now 19 to 10 after the Lake Creek basket, the Anderson miss. And they'll have it back. Here's Boyd with it working around the perimeter. Get it back out. It's number 23, Ty George. Moore's going to take a three. That's going to be no good, but the rebound goes out to Fitch. He's going to try again. That's no good as well. Rebound comes down to Keel. Pittsford wants him to push, and they will. Keel dribbles into the front court. That's going to be a double dribble going against him. Pittsford wants a little more speed with the offense right now. They'll get some subs out. So it's going to be Francis still on the court along with Keel, and then Marlo, Wagner, and Black have checked in. Now here's Fitch, crosses over on Keel, gets to the lane. Keel cut off the drive pretty well. Boyd lost it going up. It was knocked out of bounds by Benito Black. It'll stay here, though. Fitch on the inbound. He gets it in. Wagner knocks it away. He was looking for Boyd. Anderson once again hopping in the lane. Fitch. He's able to get it up top over to George. George is going to cross over, pull back for three. 
That's no good. Rebound comes inside, by rebounded by Sawyer Matchett. He's in the game for the first time. Boyd, he's on the perimeter with it. They get it up top to match it. He's going to work his way backwards, but Benito Black is just going to take it right away from him. Wagner up to Francis. Now here we go. Jack into the lane. Hop, step, layup is good. Jack Francis coast to coast. Anderson breaks 21st. It's 21 to 10, and Lake Creek needs a timeout. A dominant showing here in the first half from the Anderson Trojans sees them up by 10. 2.41 remaining here in the quarter. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be right back. When we come back, we'll have the last minute of the second quarter here. Bike Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at BikeBYPE.com. Bike is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, about yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates the Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to BikeBYPE.com. Welcome back into Bryan, Texas. We are at Rudder High School. Jack Farrell joining you here. If you are just joining us, it's been a good showing from the Anderson Trojans so far. They lead by 11, playing some stifling defense as they get another steal there. And who else? Mike Wagner. Francis over to Marlo. Marlo going to take, oh, he thought about it, but he's going to take it back to Francis. Now here's Mike. Dribbles over to Keel. Keel going to pull from downtown. They left him open. Can't get it to go. Francis bats it away, but Lake Creek's able to come up with the rebound. Now it's a two-on-one. Fitch going to take it all the way into the basket. His off-balance layup's no good. The runner is no good. Excuse me, the follow is no good. And then back up to Francis. Lions unable to do anything in the half court. And then when they get out in transition, Anderson's clamping them there. So here's Marlowe. He works around a pick. They get it to Wagner. He works around a pick. Now he's got a mismatch. Now they'll just reset. 1.45 left. Wagner directing traffic. They get it back up top to Marlowe. Marlowe into Keel. Keel tried to pass it inside to Black. He didn't have it, but Black comes up with it, misses the shot, and the rebound goes inside to Lake Creek, and they were throwing some elbows there. But they'll let it go. They've let everything go, pretty much. There's only been two, or excuse me, three team fouls called for anybody this whole game. So officials really swallowing the whistle early here, and that, that's a, I think that's a good no call. As I say that, it looks like we have an offensive foul. He tried to hook around him, getting position in the post. It'll go the other way, Trojan ball. Now here we go. Ball still back here with Marlowe. Keel's going to hit the bench. Bennett Blackerby is going to get his first minutes of action here. We saw him a little bit in the first game, not too much, but here he is. He's going to get his first look at the playoffs. He can't connect on it. Rebounds batted out. That's going to stay. Who's it? Where? Excuse me. We don't know yet. That's going to be white ball. They lead by 11 here still with a minute left. Now here's Fitch. Fitch working his way around. He passes it off to Boyd. Now back up top, here's number 32, Charlie Johnson. They kick it inside. Here's Johnson. Johnson goes up, and they got Wagner for a foul. He was straight up. Johnson tried to go up and under, got a piece of Wagner's arm, and he'll head to the line. Getting the you can't do that chant as they trail by 11. As free throws step into the line, here's Johnson. First free throws of the game for Lions. That one's no good. Anderson has only allowed 10 points. As the Lions have vacated the lane area, so all Anderson has to do is box out shooter as Johnson goes 0 for 2 from the line. 42 seconds left here in the half. Wagner bringing it up for the Anderson Trojans. 
they are nursing an 11 point lead. The man with the ball, Jack Francis, has filled up seven in this first half. He's got a third of his team's overall points. Fitch comes up in defense on Wagner. Wagner gets the counter reset. They get it up to Langley. Now back to Wagner, 20 seconds left. Francis on the left side, more defending. Screen comes from Langley on the crossover. They'll pull back 14 seconds now. Francis crosses over, goes behind the pack. Almost lost it. He crosses over. Now he's going to attack the basket. Eurostep all the way to the basket. He gets it to go. Jack Francis, highlight play to end the half. But here's Boyd, and he gets trapped at half, and he won't even get a look off. Jack Francis and the Anderson defense, an absolute dominant display in that first half as the Anderson Trojans take a 13-point lead into the break. How about that half from Anderson? Just a dominant showing there in the first half. We'll be back in just a minute. We'll get some halftime discussion going right after this. But for now, I'm just going to take a quick break, put the headset down, and just enjoy some of the halftime show. Anderson leads 23-10. to 10. Jack Francis has nine. Mike Wagner's behind him with five points. Those are your leaders for Anderson. And for Lake Creek, Mason Moore, Hudson Boyd, both a bit of triple. That's good for a team high for them, three points each. But for now, going to go ahead and take that break. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Bike Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at BikeVYPE.com. Bike is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, not yet another Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone, touchdown Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one! Log on to VipeVYPE.com. Vipe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipevype.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vipe stands above the rest. Vipe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vipe, VYPE.com. VYPE.com. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VipeVYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vipe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vipe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VipeVYPE.com. Yeah! For the end zone, touchdown Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk-off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vibe Sports. BYP. Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VipeVYPE.com. Vipe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, not yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone, touchdown Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VipeVYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events, 
For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vibe, B-Y-P-E dot com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vibe, B-Y-P-E dot com. Yeah! For the end zone, touchdown, Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk-off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vibe Sports. BYP. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE dot com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for fifteen years. Three thirteen, again another reverse breaking tackles, dives to the end zone, touchdown Rangers. Sixteen seconds, really perfect corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Oh, Rangers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeBYPE dot com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype dot com. Coming out out of the halftime break here. Still got a few minutes, as you can see, until the half is going to get underway. But three minutes left. I would love to get some thoughts in on the game. So, obviously, uh, if, if Anderson is going to steal the ball every time that Lake Creek has it, uh, it's going to be tough for them to get back into it. But don't expect them to be as easy to run through as they were in that first half. Expect much crisper, much cleaner passes, much more awareness on the court from this Lake Creek team as they cannot afford to, to lose the way that they are losing. Because offensively, they're both hitting pretty similar shots. Anderson, of course, they're just forcing steals, getting layups out of it. And Anderson done an okay job knocking down their outside shots. Lake Creek doing an okay job as well. But anytime you score only 10 points in a half, it's going to be tough to come back from. Fortunately for them, Anderson didn't have an too special of an offensive half themselves. They only scored 23 points as here they are to get set on the court for this half of basketball. We'll see what we've got coming up here in just a few minutes, two minutes to be exact, until we get ready to take the court once again. Taking a look at the scoreboard here. Nick Harris knocked down a three in the first half. He has three points. Gross Keel, oh, uh, he's got two. Francis, as we mentioned, he has nine points. Been a good showing for him. He was able to hit a three-pointer earlier in the half. Just one for him, though. The rest of him coming from him attacking the basket, and he has been excellent in that area tonight. Busting out some dribble moves, busting out some fancy footwork to get to the basket and lay it up with ease. So he's got nine. Mike Wagner scored the first five points for the team. And has yet to score since, although him scoring those first five points was pretty unusual. Mike not usually the type to try and look for his own offense first, much more a passer on this team, but they will take anything they can get from him as he knocked down an open three-point look, and that's exactly what he needs to keep doing if he's getting those looks. 
to round out the scoring column. Haven't gotten a lot of guys in the game, you know, with the playoffs in. You, you shorten up that rotation in a big way. So some guys normally getting a lot of minutes aren't playing nearly as much. But to round out the scoring, Benito Black and Jaden Austin, the two other starters, have scored. So all five starters plus Keel in the scoring column. We have seen a little bit of Caden Marlowe. We have seen a little bit of Nate Langley. And we've seen uh, just like a two minutes or so of Bennett Blackerby. So we'll see what we get in the second half here. Now, for now, just taking the court to start things is that normal starting group that is so effective for the Anderson Trojans. Now, something that is excellent to start this half, we got cheerleaders on the other side of the court. So if nothing, you should be able to see a tiny, tiny bit better. But here we go. It'll be Lake Creek ball to start things out. Moore on the inbound, he gets it to Fitch. Fitch been running the show here for the most part as they get it inside. Another man who's touched the ball a lot, that's Hudson Boyd. Now Charlie Johnson with it on the high post. Boyd in the post, he spins up top. Now they'll have to reset, here's Fitch. Working on Austin Fitch, gonna step into a long three-pointer, that's no good, and Anderson will take that shot all day. Mike Wagner pushing the pace. As he looks to the corner, a no-look pass to Jaden Austin, and that's blocked, but Jaden gets it right back, swings it back up top. Another excellent pass to Nick Harris, and they get the lay. So how about that? Mike Wagner with one insane no-look pass, right to another insane no-look pass. The Anderson lead is now 15 points. Gonna make sure we get our scoreboard nice and updated. As here's Fitch stuck up top, they kick it to the corner to Boyd. Now Moore. Austin chases him off the three-point line. They get it back to Fitch. Wagner chases him off the three-point line. He goes up with it through Austin. No call, but Wagner's there on the rebound. Now here comes Jack Francis going to push the pace for the Trojans. Instead, he will not actually do that and pull it back. Get it to Wagner. Francis fades to the corner. He's wide open for three. That's no good. Too short. Rebound falls into Moore. Now here comes Fitch. They get the pass ahead to Boyd. Boyd gets an easy one to go. Each team with one make to start the game. That's a dangerous pass up ahead to Black, and that's knocked out of bounds off of Lake Creek. So Anderson will have baseline out here. 6.32 remaining here in the third quarter. Wagner struggles to get it in, but he finds Benito Black. Now here outside to Austin. Now into the corner, Nick Harris gonna try his luck at a three. That's no good, Benito Black gets the long rebound, finds Austin, Austin puts one dribble in, goes up with it, he's blocked, hits the floor, and that's going the other way. Here comes Fitch for the Lions. Now over to the wing, that's Ty George. Now back up top to Fitch. Harris in defense, forces it inside. Number 32, Charlie Johnson working on Black. They get it to Boyd in the corner. Screen comes, Boyd forces the pass to Johnson. Johnson goes up with it, and that's gonna be a foul underneath going against Anderson. Once again, I don't think Anderson has shot a free throw in this game. Lake Creek is 0 for 2, I believe. Charlie Johnson steps to the line now and he knocks one in. Twenty-five to thirteen now. Low scoring affair through most of this. As he goes one for two, Nick Harris collects the rebound. Here comes Wagner. They get it to Harris. Harris backdoor cut. Benito Black gets a man in the air, and that's got to be a foul. And they're going to call a travel. He jumped on his head, and they call a foul going against Anderson. Benito Black quite literally was kicked in the head on that play. And it's a travel. Pass inside, behind the head layup. That's Boyd. No, excuse me, that's Johnson. Johnson getting things going here. He's got five points now in the game. 
Anderson still leads by 10. Here's Austin. Austin going to step into a three-pointer. That's no good. Rebound goes outside. Benito Black recovers. Austin on the cut. He's going to go up with it, and he gets it to go. That's been working here for Anderson, attacking the basket. If they get some calls inside, it's going to be tough for them to stop. Now here's Fitch working it up for Lake Creek. So five, uh, seven points, excuse me, already scored in the quarter from Lake Creek. Only had 10 in the entire first half. Anderson, though, has scored five of their own, so the lead is still at 11. Or excuse me, they've scored four of their own. Fitch crosses over. He didn't get Austin with the move at all, so great defense from Austin. That was a nasty step back that uh, Austin didn't bite on at all. As here's Boyd. He almost traveled with it. Now here's Moore back to Boyd. Boyd going to attack the paint. Now kick outside to Moore. And that's a pass inside. It's thrown away. Trojan ball will have some substitutions. Logan Peterson getting into the game for the first time for the Lions. Nate Langley, Gross Keel checking in now too. So Austin and Harris will head to the bench. 431 remaining here in the third. Francis passes it off to Wagner. Wagner over to Francis. Now Keel in the corner. Keel pump fake back to Jack. Now over to Wagner. So he swings to the corner, Langley. Back up top, here's Wagner. Wagner gets it inside to Langley. Langley goes up with it, gets his own rebound, and now he got the follow. Nate Langley's first basket of the night comes off of his own miss. Anderson up to 14 points. Their biggest lead of the game is 15. And that's going to be an offensive foul on the illegal screen going against Boyd. I've got to say, there have not been very many calls in this game, but all of the ones that I have seen have been pretty much, have seen a bunch of offensive fouls. And uh, I just haven't noticed that they've been happening. So... They're, they're letting them play. They're letting the defense play, but they're getting the offense on ticky-tack stuff, both sides. In fact, uh, both teams with one team foul right now. As here's Fitch going coast to coast. Got him in the air a little early. That's a tough runner. He gets to go. Second basket of the game for Fitch. Keel with it outside. Now over to Wagner, back to Francis. 3.30 left. Wagner dribbles into a pull-up. Can't get it to go. Rebound hits down to Langley. It falls away. Francis is going to be the one to recover it. He's going to step into a three-pointer of his own. That's no good. Francis lost the rebound. That's going to be taken down by Lake Creek, and it'll go the other way. So that shot, no good. Quick release on the other end. So Anderson will take that and come right back down with it. Kick over to Francis. Francis is going to attack the basket. He got inside. He's hit in a big way. That's a foul. Or excuse me, no foul called. I, I, I believe... I think that was all ball. No foul call. I, 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 that's what I meant to say. Is no foul was called. I think that's the right call. I think that was all ball. Francis did a good job selling it. He threw the head back a little bit. But that'll stay here. 29-17. Anderson still leads by 12. They get it into Benito Black. Swing to the corner. Francis. Ooh. Almost had a lane baseline. Couldn't take it. Back up site. Here's Mike Wagner. Over to Keel. Oh, they're going to get it back to, back to Mike. Langley swings it across to Francis. Jab step, gets into the lane. His floater is no good. He's trying to draw contact. Anderson has still yet to shoot a free throw in this ballgame as Boyd can't get it on the other end, and that's another careless turnover for Lake Creek. Anderson playing a sloppy, disjointed third quarter, but Lake Creek really hasn't made them pay yet. Lake Creek scored seven. Anderson has scored six. So now Anderson will have the ball back. Still nursing that lead. They get it back to Jack. Screen comes from Langley. Good defense coming up off of the screen. Now over to Wagner. Wagner, he looks for Langley inside. Langley puts his back to the basket, goes up with it, almost lost it. Back to Wagner. He's going to attack the paint. Dumps it off to Keel. Gross Keel lays it up and in. Second bucket of the game for Gross Keel forces a timeout. Anderson lead is back up to 14. on the timeout. It'll be a 30-second timeout, so we're going to go ahead and keep it here. I'd like to thank once again 
my QA, Mr. Josh Cargill, as well as our logo sponsors on the bottom of your screen there. They've been with us all season. Harry Breen and Herman, as well as Enco Tech. Coming out the timeout, Anderson getting ready, getting set. It'll be Lake Creek ball. And they'll just have a baseline out. Both teams only with one team foul so far. Both have four timeouts left. As Fitch has it now, he gets it up top to Peterson. Now back to Fitch. He's going to take a quick release on the three. That's no good. He's struggled on offense all night. And Wagner almost loses it back to Francis. It was tipped away. Francis. Works his way up to Keel. Keel going to step into a triple, and that's no good. Francis is there on the follow. He can't get it, but he gets this one, and he gets it to go. Jack Francis, leading scorer tonight. He's up to double figures with 11 points. He's got a third of them. Anderson with 33. They lead by 16. That's their largest of the ball game. Peterson. Looking for Boyd. It's not there. Eventually it's there. And that's going to be a five-second violation. Turnover, Lake Creek. My goodness. Anderson just shutting down this Lake Creek offense tonight. They are stymied. If I may use a vocab word. Stymied. Anderson with possession once again. Jack Francis over on the wing. He's looking for Nick Harris, who's been quiet tonight, just five after his big outing. As Keel is going to take another three, that's no good. His high arcing shot just hasn't found the mark tonight. As Fish is going to sprint into the front court, pulls back, now swings to Moore, who's open for three. He can't get it to go. Langley goes up strong for the board. Mike Wagner brings it down. Anderson ball. He goes behind the back. Somehow didn't turn that over, but here's Wagner. Under a minute left here in the third. Francis with it up top. They swing it across to Keel. Keel taking his dribbles inside. He lost it, and that's going to be out of bounds. Two touched it. Two touched it. No! Two touched it! I Well, that's a bad call. Normal, normally, I like to give the refs a benefit of the doubt because I am uh, not not close to the situation, but that one I can, I can absolutely confirm. That was off of Mason Moore. He touched it last. But it's Lion Ball. No matter, though, for Anderson right now. They just have to get another stop as... The ball is rolling horizontally across the court, and this is the one instance that the roll-up didn't really work. But now there's just 35 seconds left for more. I wouldn't take it slow if I were the Lions. They need to just they need to get more shots up. The more shots up they can get, the better chance they have at winning. Here's more. 24 seconds left. They get it into the corner. Here's Boyd. Boyd attacking Langley off the dribble. He's going to go up and under. Left it short. Rebound comes down to Johnson. Johnson gets the follow. Charlie Johnson has emerged as the new leading scorer for the Lions. He's got seven points. Nine seconds left. Let's see what Anderson can do. Six seconds. Wagner passes ahead. Here's Austin. Austin going to take the three at the buzzer. It's no good. Rebound goes to Moore. And that's how the quarter will end. So a much better offensive quarter for Lake Creek. But Anderson stand par for the course. And with that, they have a 14-point lead entering the, third, excuse me, the fourth quarter. So with that, it's a tough break for the quarter to end like that for Anderson, given the uh, fact that they were uh, kind of taking a call away. Five Live, formerly KMAT Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VIPE.com. Vibe, Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 for team. Breaking tackles, dives in the end zone, touchdown Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. But takes the Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Here we go. Sorry about that. Got cut off there towards the end of the timeout, but that's all right. We're back here now, getting ready for the start of the fourth quarter. Jack Farrell once again joining you for some Trojan basketball. It's been a heck of a season. And they lead by 14 now. Just have to make sure to take care of business here in the fourth quarter to try and move on. Anderson will have possession to start the quarter.
Francis. Wagner. Wagner's going to attack. He gets a pass off to Benito Black, whose floater is good inside. Benito Black gets his second look of the day to fall. This here's Fitch attacking the paint very quick. He lost it, and that's out of bounds. Wagner stepped out. So another tough whistle for Anderson. Fitch complaining about a foul call, but nobody's getting them all day. I, I still don't think Anderson has taken a free throw yet. But they do lead by 16. This Fitch is trying to get the ball in now. He's going to struggle to. Austin going to jump for it too high. Smart play by him, not gambling. Let's go for that one. They'll just get back in defense. Here's Boyd with it. Wagner in defense. They get it back up top to Fitch. Jordan Fitch, four points. He's done the majority of the playmaking in this one for Lake Creek. Screen comes. He switches on to Black. He's going to attack. Goes behind the back. Dribbled it off his own shoe. And Harris takes the steal away. Nick Harris dribbling into the front court and said he's just going to pull it right back. Way to be... Better to be conservative here as that pass is knocked away inside. That's going to go off of Anderson again. No complaint from them. So it's a turnover here. Lion ball. There sure haven't been many calls in this game. But Anderson has struggled to get any. Fitch, he kills his dribble up top. Better smother him. And they get it back outside to Boyd. They wanted the five-second violation. Boyd working on Wagner. It's been a matchup for a while. Boyd's going to take it in. That's, that's a foul? It's a blocking foul, I guess, going against Wagner. Wagner going to get clarification on it, so Boyd will head back to the line. Hudson Boyd, five points so far in the game. 35-19. Boyd looking to... Cut down into this a little bit. He makes the first. Leads just down to 15, though. They're in their 20s, though. Good, good defense by Anderson. If someone's getting to the 20th point in the fourth quarter, you're doing something right. He goes two for two with a sweet stroke. Hudson Boyd, seven points on the game for him. Lost the ball here. That's just the second team foul going against Anderson, who, despite being the higher seed, are listed as the guests tonight. So they get this one into Jack. He crosses over. Now he works his way into the front court. He's just trying to dribble himself free. Screen comes from Harris. They get it to him. Now Harris going to attack the paint over to Wagner. Wagner going to step into a triple. It's no good. Rebound batted out. Fitch goes to the ground. And mm, that's another tough whistle going against the Trojans. They just, uh, just haven't gotten one tonight. That one goes against Austin. They still trail 14. There's six and a half left. Ball gets into Fitch. Now it's time for Anderson to clamp up, play some defense. Fitch attacks the paint, goes all the way in, and that's blocked out of bounds by Benito Black. Sends that one packing. We'll have some subs here. Moore's going to check back in for Mitch O'Neill. McKeel's going to check in for, for some defense here. Benito Black's going to check on out. Still six and a half left. Haven't gotten much time off the court or off the clock here. Hudson Boyd's going to be the man to inbound it for the Lions. Looking for Fitch. They're going to pass it up. Keel almost had the chance to steal that one away. Could have gotten his defensive back hands up. Got a hand on the ball, but Fitch has it over to Boyd. Now Keel in defense. Boyd dribbles to his right. Keel almost poked it away. He forces him into the corner. He knocked it out of bounds off of Boyd. Gross Keel What the defensive stop. My goodness. He's been showing out on the defensive end all season. He's just a pleasure to watch. And just so much. He just brings a lot of energy off the bench. It's one of the most important things he does. He's just a little battery. You plug him in and they're good to go. Here's Jack Francis. Wagner. Six minutes left. They're having to work their way across. Look for someone to get it to. He's able to get it to Harris. So they have it across over back to Keel. Keel back to Austin. Anderson 
should just take it slow here. Austin getting bumped back to Harris. Harris takes it in, passes to Keel. He kicks it out to Austin. Wide open look for Jaden. That's a big basket from Jaden Austin. That's hurtful. That is a that is a that is a uh, that is a demoralizing basket. Absolutely, just a killer. That puts Anderson up 17, just over five and a half remaining. Lake Creek will need a timeout. It actually looks like Anderson's the one that are going to be burning the timeout here. But how about Jaden Austin? He's connected on one from downtown. He's taken a few, hasn't knocked him down, but doesn't let that bother him. When they need the big one, he knocks it down. Anderson leads by 17 points. Well on their way to the quarterfinal round. We've got five and a half to go. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back for some more fourth quarter action. You're listening to Trojan Basketball on Vibe Live. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Here we go. Jack Farrell joining you here once again, y'all. Hope y'all are doing all right. We're right out of the timeout and into the action. Off the Jaden Austin three-point bucket, give him seven on the day. Now here's more with it on the outside. He's looking for somewhere to go with it. Instead, he's just going to kick it back up top, Ty George. Boyd with it. Hudson's attacking on Austin. Good closeout by Austin, but that one drops. Got the roll. Shooters bounce. Leads down to 15. Keel with it in the backcourt. Anderson would do well to just slow it all the way down here. Keel over to Harris. Now back inside Jack Francis. Unless you get a layup like that, that's blocked out of bounds, but it'll be Anderson ball. So good highlight. Good highlight, but what's important, Anderson will get the ball back. Anderson will take that all day. Give you a chance to reset the offense, take some more time off the clock. They get it into Keel. Keel's just going to take it right up, though. So Gross Keel erases the basket on the other end. He's up to six points. Anderson's up to 40. The lead's back to 17. As a quick shot on the other end is no good as that was adjusting scoreboard. Here's Austin. He gets it back to Wagner. 442 left. Mike crosses over. He's working on Fitch. Got him a couple times with it. Now here's uh, excuse me, Harris. Austin on the cut. Back to Keel. Keel going to step into a three. Bang! Gross Keel from downtown. The Anderson lead is 20 points. Gross Keel coming alive here in the fourth. He's got nine. Back outside, Boyd. He's going to try and make it happen. Now Moore. Moore gets an open look for three. That's no good. Rebound is good inside. That's a nice play by Charlie Johnson to go up over the smaller Wagner, get the rebound, get the follow. It's back down to 18. We're halfway through the fourth here. Wagner is trying to work on Fitch. Now here's Harris, and that's going to be a foul going against Johnson. Now, that's Johnson's second, just the second team foul going against Lake Creek. I think Anderson, I really think there have only been about five calls on Lake Creek this whole game. Not that I, I, I think they've played some solid defense. I just don't think there have been many fouls, or normally there are, as Jaden Austin gets the bucket off the nice feed, and the wheels are starting to fall off a little bit for Lake Creek. Leads back up to 20. As Boyd is going to go back to the line, that's a, that's a tough call. That's a good defensive play by Wagner. They're going to get him. Mike Wagner has, uh, has, has gotten some tough calls going against him in this game. But he's, uh, he's not going to complain. That's the third foul going against Mike. His team still leads handily. Boyd gets the first to go, so he's the first player into double figures now for the Lake Creek team. They've got it back to 19. 3.39 remaining here in the fourth. Boyd goes one for two from the line. It's been the story most of the game. Lake Creek got into the line. They've gone one for two. As Keel crosses over and he got him. Gross Keel with the move and he tried it again. He lost it out of bounds. So he got too greedy. 
But just before that, he got Logan Peterson with a vicious behind-the-back crossover. Now here's Boyd. Leads 19 for Anderson. They skip it across. Here's Moore. 320 left. Now here's Fitch going to attack the paint. He goes down with it. Slid on the floor. Should be a travel. Now Moore with it. He goes up with it. And they're going to get a foul going against Austin. My goodness. Are they going to get Wagner on that? Somehow that's against Mike Wagner. That's his fourth. So Peterson's back to uh, inbound the game for Boyd, or excuse me, for Lockhart, or the Lions, not Lockhart. They get it into Boyd, who's going to try a three-pointer, missed it all, air ball. Johnson tried to save it, but Nick Harris is there to collect it. I'm getting my tongue tied here in the last couple minutes. Austin. Back up top, Keel. Get it to Francis. Francis put up 11 points so far in the game. And now he's stuck with it. This is going to be probably a jump ball. That's a, yep, that's a jump ball. So it'll be Lake Creek ball. So once again, Anderson has gone the, through this whole entire game. They haven't stepped to the line a single time. Anderson started it in the fourth. So it'll be Lake Creek ball here. So despite everything so far, Anderson leads by 19 points in the waning minutes. Here's Moore. Back Fitch. He's going to try again from three. That's uh, that's an air ball. And they uh, Peterson is there to clear it away. We'll call that a pass for Fitch's sake. It's now still 17. Austin lost it. They get it ahead. Here's Boyd. He's going to run into a three. That rims out. He just did that to avoid the travel, but it almost dropped. Still 17 points, two minutes left. So Francis able to work it across court here. Crosses over. He's going to try to get to the basket. They get it to Blackerby. He's not going to take the three. That's a smart move from the sophomore. Swing across Austin. He's going to attack the paint. He's going to go up strong. And finally, Anderson will get free throws as Austin hits his head hard on the court. So finally, Anderson gets one whistle, and it's going to take an injured player for them to actually hit the line. Get the camera off as Lake Creek is, their student section is heckling Austin as he lies down in pain on the court. He's getting up now. The Creek will head to the, or excuse me, Austin will head to the line after the third Lake Creek team foul. But Austin's good to go. Looks like they're gonna, they might want to uh, evaluate him after the game here. Take a look at him, he's trying to shake that Nasty hit off. Looked like his head made contact with the court. As Austin goes up and he misses the first. So Austin heads to the line where he can't. I'm sure he's still shaking stars out of his eyes as he goes 0 for 2 from the line. So here's Lake Creek, just over two minutes left. Boyd's going to attack the paint, get around Blackerby. And he gets it to go. So Boyd gets the layup, and he's up to 12 points. Francis in on the inbound. He's going to get it into Keel, and that's going to be a foul going the other way against Peterson. So Anderson with a 15-point lead. Wagner going to check in. Austin going to have to check out. So Blackerby is also going to check out in favor of Benito Black. So now Anderson just needs to worry about getting the ball across court because there's two minutes left. They still lead handily by 15. They get it into Harris. Now back outside to Jack. Now they're going to take their time with it. They have to work their way across. They only got the 10 seconds. Here's Francis. Gets it. And that's a foul coming in from Fitch. He bumped Jack. That's just the fifth team foul, so they've still got a way to go before they want to get to the bonus. Wagner, one of the most vocal players on this team. Definitely, he's always communicating with his team on offense, calling out plays, telling guys where to rotate on defense. 
as uh, Benito Black's going to check out. Parker Shelton Lamb's going to check back in. It looks like we're uh, going to start thinking about who's going to knock down some free throws here. So here's Francis. Boyd fouls him. Well, it looks like we're going to hop into the free, free throw game a little early here. That's the sixth team foul going against uh, the Lions. So next foul, we'll actually be able to see some free throws. So Langley's going to check in for Keel. And Boyd checks out. That was his uh, that was his second team foul. Or his second personal, I should say. You get it into Harris. Now back, nope, he's not going to get it back to Wagner. Instead, it's just going to be Harris. And now Nick's going to take the one on one. So Nick Harris steps to the line. He scored five points so far in the game. Got a lot of subs. Anderson going to vacate the uh, vacate the lane here. And it's uh, the group on the court after the substitutions is Harris there at the line. Then behind it, you got Francis Langley, Black, and Keel. So Nick, one and one, hits the first. the third free throw of the game for Anderson. As Nick Harris, he goes one for two from the line, but that's all right for now as the lead's still 16. Fitch, back to Boyd, Keel in defense, clamping up Boyd. He's going to get all the way to the basket, try to pass it into Johnson. He goes behind his head with it. That's a nice little find. We're going to take a quick timeout. So the end of this game winded down slowly. Got a minute 40 or a minute 25 left. Lake Creek season on the line. That's a full timeout, so we'll go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be right back. Five Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VIPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313. Again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds. Really close at the corner. Rotates the Wilson. She fires the three. Oh my god, it went in! Cavaliers pull a hit by one! Log on to Vibe VYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipe.com. Here we are, Jack Farrell joining you, Harry Breen and Herman, and Encotech, our wonderful sponsors for tonight's game. As we enter the final couple minutes here, <clears throat> there's 125 left. Anderson will have the ball. So Nick Harris will be the one to inbound it. They have two guys streaking up. Instead, they're just going to go full court to Gross Keel, drop in the bucket. He goes up for the layup. He can't get it to go, but he's going to have foul shots. Gross Keel, the wide receiver. And how about that pass? Nick Harris, that was a drop in the bucket. Had him streaking over the shoulder? Right on the money? We're playing the wrong sport out here right now. My goodness. Gross Keel steps to the line, two shots. Anderson lead is 14, 122 left. Trojans in the bonus going forward. Keels, first free throw is no good. That's the issue. Even when Anderson starts to get some free throws, they, uh, they don't always knock them down. So right now it's... Um, Francis, Harris, and Black, along with Blackerby and Keel. And Keel can't hit either. So he goes 0 for 2, and here comes Fitch streaking into the front court. He's going to go all the way to the basket, put his back to everybody, get it out to Moore. Moore is going to try for 3. He shook Blackerby a little bit. That rebounds inside to Harris. Harris has it down, and that's going to be a foul underneath going against Johnson. So 110 left. We're still playing the foul game. Anderson up 14. Four. 
So Nick Harris, six points on the night for him. He's one for two at the foul line. Anderson lead is 14. Harris could push it even further here. And he can't on the front end, so that'll do it. Here's Boyd racing into the front court back to Fitch. Now they'll lead to an open three-point opportunity. That, that's a brick thrown up by Ty George, and then we'll have more fouls underneath. If Anderson, they just need to start making one of them. So Jack attack with the team high 11 points so far in this one. Steps to the line to try and add on two more. As we got, we're going to start clearing the benches a little bit for Lake Creek. This might be to pick up some fouls. Or this might be to uh, get in some some shooting. Not sure what the uh, the end of the bench looks like for the Lions. Same group, Francis steps up, hits the first. By the way, that was the 10th team foul, so Anderson will be shooting the two going forward. Francis, perfect. Leads back to 16. Lake Creek sprints in. Here's Boyd, he's going up with it. And they're gonna get Benito Black on a hold. So he was trying to bully his way into the lane. They'll get Benito stepping in front of him on the block and foul. That's the sixth team foul going against Anderson, so they still got one to give before uh, for its free throws. Boyd on the inbound. He's looking into the corner, he does. Now back outside, here's Fitch. Fitch gonna try again from three, and he finally gets one to go. Seven points for Jordan. Pass ahead. Here's Francis, now back. 40 seconds left, because that's gonna be a foul going against Moore. So Jack stepping right back to the line for it. That was a tough shot on the other end Jordan Fitch hit, but at this point, it's looking like a little bit too little too late. The lead is still 13 for Anderson with just 40 seconds left. Jack, clutch. And Jack will take these, man. These are automatic. Adds to that point total. He won't have a 20 piece like he did in the last game. But 14 right now ain't bad as he goes one for two. And Johnson loses it. Fitch almost comes up with it. Harris has it. Harris loses it. Now 22 trips over Nick Harris, and they're going to get Nick Harris. Oh, okay. Seth Cantu got the ball. He tried to take a step over Nick Harris, and they got him for a foul. Nick Harris laughing it off a little bit because uh, at this point it's not really going to matter for him. That's a smart play by Seth Cantu. If a guy is lying on the court and you just run over him, that's a blocking foul. Not sure why, but it is. So Seth Cantu steps to the line, can't hit the first as Harris gets the rebound as they're going to start fouling now. And uh, might be time to give up that pursuit. The lead's still 14. There's 26 seconds left. And it didn't look to me like anybody realized that that was supposed to be a one and one. Nick Harris just caught the ball at around his waist, and then they fouled him. So Harris step into the line. He's got six. As Austin looks to be a little bit better over here on the bench as the first free throws up and good for Nick Harris. Hopefully, we'll get uh, some status on Jaden going forward in the coming days as we get ready for the next ball game. We got some subs here. Marlo and Shelton Lamb are going to check in. So hopefully, Jaden will be okay. He's a huge part of this defense. And I, 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 if, uh, if I, I would love to get a look at the scorebook at the end of the game, want to see how many steals he had. As Nick Harris just goes one for two from the line. And Anderson has 50. Fitch racing into the front court, goes all the way with it. He lost it out of bounds. That'll be white ball. Trojans lead by 15. Fitch gets it in. That's a nice find. Because the layup behind the head for Ty George is good. That's his first point of the game. Anderson leads 57 to 30 is Francis. They're still fouling. 
Jack will take it, get more stats at the line. That'll probably do it. Probably won't continue to foul here. Francis steps to the line, knocks down the first. The only reason, got to keep track of it. Got to make sure we get the right point totals at the end of the game is Jack Francis up to a team high of 15. He has been, well, he's been good all season, but in the playoffs, he's really taken it to the next level. As now checking in, we have Perez, Jamail, Stusser, and Ashimwe in for the final 11 seconds of the game. As Francis goes one for two, it rims out. He's frustrated. But that'll be 15 points to end it for Francis. Fitch going to dribble in to a three-pointer. Can't pad his stats. Stusser gets the board. Are they going to foul again? They might foul. Looks like they won't. That's it. So Anderson does it for the second straight year. They pick up a victory in area. It's still blowout. Two games, two blowouts for the Anderson Trojans as they will move on to the quarterfinal round. That should be played as early as this weekend. So wrapping things up here, and by the way, we do have a final in that Hendrickson game. The next team that Anderson will be playing are the Hendrickson Hawks, looking to get a rematch from a previous loss that they suffered earlier in this season. That should be happening this weekend, but for now, just want to take a quick look at the scoring totals. Francis had 15, Keel and Austin both with nine big games for them. Harris had seven, Wagner had five. Benito Black with four. Nate Langley had two. That's your scoring for Anderson, and that'll do it for us from Bryan, Texas. Thank you for joining us in this game tonight. Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all had a good evening. We'll see you on air next time in the quarterfinal round against Hendrickson. Thank you to all the fans that came out. Thank you to all of you that tuned in. Thank you to Josh Cargill, my QA, for helping us out at this broadcast. Harry Breen and Herman and Encotech, our sponsors. And to all of you listening out there, to my parents and everybody, hi. Hope you all have a great night. If you travel to the game, hope you have a safe trip home. And we'll see you next time.